What's going on, folks? Actually, I don't need sunglasses. What's going on, everybody? Ooh. We are just about to hit the water for the first time because we just drove nine, 10 hours to get up here to Redding from San Diego. We got to the river, we were about to fish, and I couldn't find my freaking license. So we had to go drive to the fly shop, get my license reprinted, and now we're finally ready to go out there and hit the water. And that water is the lower Sacramento River right at the Sundial Bridge. So I'm gonna stop talking now because I'm desperate to get out on the water. Where is my net? Here we go. Oh, flies. I feel like I'm in a perpetual hell right now where every time I'm about to get out on the water, something reminds me that I need it. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose it. Well, we were just driving down the road and we saw a sign that said elk viewing turn. So we were like, okay. And right off the road, there's a full pack of elk. Didn't expect to see them when we turned actually. I didn't know if they'd be here or not, but wow, they're beautiful. It looks fishy, that's for sure. I just don't know how we're gonna get there. Looks like there's a beach down there. Maybe if we go across here and over there. We are uh, a little bit tired today from all that driving and everything. So we decided today we're just gonna take a chill. We slept in. I slept till 11 because I stayed up till like 2.30 last night watching Storage Wars. So we are still gonna go fishing today. But we're really looking for a spot we can wake up early and hit tomorrow. We're looking at the middle fork of the... We're looking for the middle fork of the Smith River. We're looking for the middle fork of the Smith River. We're, we're there right now, but we just have to find access to it. I mean, this is where Google Maps took us. So we're going to go try to find a place where we can park our car and get on a beach or something and wait up and start fishing. All right, so we are about to hit the Smith River for the first time on our trip. We're driving to try to find our spot to fish and we see these guys setting up their waders and their rods. So we asked them where to go and now we're following them. The guy that we spoke to, he said he's fished 42 rivers in America and that this is the hardest one to catch steelhead in. <sighs> if we catch a fish, we can say we caught a fish in the hardest river to catch a steelhead in America. So. Fingers crossed. Oh, I also realized my net is way too small. This is my trout net that I bought and I take it with me everywhere, but that guy had a giant net. Perfect. Wow. Well, this is what we were looking for. We're gonna do it without the sound of cars, but. Okay, we finally found a spot to fish on the Smith River. Uh, I don't know where it is. It's like right off the road outside of Gasket. And uh, the water is cold, the water is clear, and it's moving pretty slow. So we've got, I don't even honestly know what to call this fly. I'm so new to spay casting, but we've got this nice colorful big fly that the people at the fly shop in Reading told me that this is what I should use if it's low and slow. It's low and slow, so that's what we're gonna start with. Doesn't it look like the Macaw River? It does. Now this looks a little more like what we're used to. Seriously looks like the spitting image of the McLeod River, which we've fished in the past and also came up empty handed, but whatever. This is a beautiful spot. 
and we got it all to ourselves. We had to switch spots because the spot we were at the first place, the river was running to my left and I suck at the single spay, so I have to work on that. I didn't want to work on it now. We're gonna be here where we can do the double spay that I know a little bit more. I was practicing it when we were at the Sacramento River. I like it better here. I'm gonna feel more of a accomplished. There was other fly fishermen or spay casters. I think they were using a trout spay that were hanging out over by where we were. They were on the other side of the river, so they were able to do the double spay and they could just see me using a full spay rod just being absolute garbage. I was too embarrassed to stay. Only slightly more comfortable with the double spay. What's going on, folks? It's uh, bright and early. We waited for the sun to come up a little bit before we started setting our lines and everything. And now everything's all set up. Put on new leader, new fly, and uh, it's a new day, so. Let's see if we can get some new fish, or any fish at all. I'll take an old fish if, if they're if they're out. Let's see how it goes. I keep like almost smacking myself in the back of the head with my fly. And I actually did smack myself in the back of the head with my fly yesterday, so... I know what it feels like and I don't want it to happen again. <sighs> Spay casting is freaking rough. See, that one was like really close to almost smacking me in the back of the head. Jesus, why is it so f***ing hard? I swear I had it the other day, and now all of a sudden it's like I'm getting terrible cast after terrible cast. Ah! Ah! Gotcha. Oh my god. I just hit myself in the eye with my giant steelhead fly. So I'm really, really lucky that it hit me with the like metal part of it, but not the actual, not the actual hook. I would be probably getting rushed off to a hospital right now if that went just a little bit different than it did. I was casting a double spay. I don't know why it did this. I did something wrong. Maybe I was trying to cast it out too aggressively but it whips back and the fly wraps around my head and hit me right in my eye. We're still practicing our, our casting here, trying to get everything figured out, but it's not something you really want to mess around with. You should learn to do it, but be careful before you just go out there and try to do it like I am. I should be, you know, I should have practiced a lot more before we came out here, but I didn't, so it is what it is. I'm glad that I didn't hurt my eye so I can soak in all the great trees that are surrounding around us. This place is amazingly beautiful and uh, it's a great river to, to cast a line in and soak in the trees around you. We're not the only ones who apparently think this place is beautiful because they filmed the Ewok village from Star Wars right like in this area in the Jedediah part of Smith River. So apparently uh, it looked like something out of this world to uh, the creators of Star Wars. So. We're taking that in, we're pretending like we're at the Ewok planet, and uh, we're gonna try to catch some fish on it. <laughs> we're just pretending we're in the Ewok village right now? Yeah, I'm pretending I'm in the Ewok village. Free movie set sighting. I wonder what part of the, like where specifically they actually did it. We should look it up. Yeah, we should. Well. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We have no idea what we're doing. No fish, bad casts, and 
I think we're going to get food now. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. We're going to get food now. If I look a little crazy, it's because I feel a little crazy. Every cast that I did, I was pretty much going like this. I would cast and then go. I did not want to be on the receiving end of that hook again. And uh, I don't know, I like being able to see. It makes, uh, makes walking through rivers and fishing much easier. I don't want to know how hard it would be to tie a knot with only one eye. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go take a break for a little bit. But we're definitely gonna grab some food and relax. And then we're gonna go fishing some more later. So catch you later and hopefully catch some fish later. Sucked. Hit the water too late. That rock sucked. Whatever. Fuck it. I don't think the Ewoks are gonna help us. I don't think they know us. And they didn't know the Jedi's when they helped them. But they have some sort of special connection to the Jedi's. Like the way that trees talk to each other. Ewoks and Jedi's have like a secret communication. They helped Han Solo. He's not a Jedi. We are here on the Smith River using our new spay rod, the Reddington Dooley. And uh, we have got on the end of it a nice fat big fly with a big hook. We're going for the steelhead. You know, it takes a lot of practice to get these spay casts down and I am not, I'm not joking with you there. They are very hard to do and I've been practicing a lot but even with the practice, it's still pretty dang hard to get that double spay correct. But once you get it, it's very satisfying. It feels very good. Um, I don't say that I'm, I'm anyone that should be teaching at all to how to do the spay cast. I highly recommend watching Ashland Fly Shop or Rio Products YouTube videos about fly fishing or about the spay casting. They're very helpful. So I'm gonna show you what I do for the double spay right now. You bring your rod tip up and place it to the side, bringing your leader in front of you, and then you whip it back and cast forward. If you can see, I'm a little bit scared of the fly because I did get whacked in the face today. So uh, that's not exactly what you want. I'm a little bit skittish. But after I learned from those Rio videos and the Ashland Fly Shop videos, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable. So I'll show you it again real quick. You're going to pull your fly rod up, place it down so that your leader's in front of you, whip it around behind you, and then cast forward and then it goes off. You try to cast it about a 45 degree downstream from you with this cast, or you can go directly across, but I'm trying to do the 45 degree angle. And uh, this works really well with a Skagit line, which is what I'm using. It's a cast where the fly and the line stays mostly connected to the water during it. And that's what you need when you're flipping around these crazy big flies. And then you might mend your line a couple of times after each cast, you know, take a step down river. I usually go up river, but this river is pretty big. I don't think we're gonna be scaring away any steelhead if we're really quiet when we take those steps. So you strip the line back. Bring it up and over, get that leader in front of you, whip around, whip forward. Not bad, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm still a very, very much novice. And like I said, I don't think that you should learn anything from me with these, but you can look up those videos by Rio and you can look up those videos by Ashland Fly Shop and they will definitely be very helpful for you. So just one more time, strip the line back, cross over your body, back, forward. And that's the double spay. So I'm very much still working on it, but I highly recommend going out and getting one of these rods because if you're getting comfortable using your fly rod, this will definitely start making you feel very uncomfortable. So go out and check it out. The Reddington Dooley lifetime warranty. You can get the package from Ashland Fly Shop like I did, where they give you the line, the reel, the rod, and it's a lifetime warranty. So I'm gonna keep fishing and uh, hopefully we can catch some fish. The name's Jedediah Smith. 
I discovered these mountains here, so I'll put my name down on it. These are my here hills, my here trees. I own it all. They're my fish, it's my river. That's even my rock. Everything you can see is all mine. What did I do? What did I do? Well, I'm just the most famous fur trapper in the world. You think Boone? No, Jedediah Smith. Let me see your fur coat. Yep, that's mine. Let me see your fur hat. Yep, that's mine. Sorry, sir, did you just catch that fish? Oh, well, it's mine. I'm Jedediah Smith.